Hello and welcome to ESG Finance. Today is June 17th, 2022, and the national average for gasoline prices is $5 a gallon. Yesterday, it was one penny higher. So yes, uh, last year, it was $3. So we have like a 30% increase in gas prices, and you may be considering a purchase of an electric vehicle. It just so happens that I own two electric vehicles, and I wanted to review those vehicles as well as give you some anecdotal things that I've heard about some other vehicles. So these will be all low-cost electric vehicles, and uh, I'll tell you why they're low cost, even though the sticker price might may be a little higher than what you'd like. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you some anecdotal evidence that I know about each vehicle. So let's get into it here. The first vehicle is going to be the 2022 Nissan Leaf. I own a 2013 Nissan Leaf. There have been many improvements to this design. I can tell you that my Nissan Leaf from 2013 was supposed to get somewhere around 120 miles. It it never got that much. It probably only got around 90. And now with battery degradation, it probably only gets 70. Could it go 120 miles? Yes, at like 30 miles per hour. Uh, they are saying that the range of this new version is 2026. I'm very skeptical of that. Uh, what I would assume would you take 30 or 40 miles off that, which would give you 180 miles. That is quite formidable in terms of an EV. Your commutes, <clears throat> the strong majority of you would probably be 60 miles a day max. That would be a long commute for an average American. So you're easily going to be able to, to achieve that. And even if this is 180 miles on the freeway, that's probably going to accommodate 90% of my viewers' uh, commutes here. So I would say that it's well worth uh, its $27,000. So for a car that's kind of small, it's a four-door hatchback. And it is quite roomy. So the EVs have a lot more room. It does not have a frunk. Um, the engine compartment in my 2013 is largely empty. But... Uh, so it is quite a roomy car for being a smaller car. I will say that my concern with it is that Nissan went with a smaller battery pack. So it's a 40 kW kilowatt hours. So if you're just getting into the EV market, everything is in kilowatt hours instead of uh, miles per gallon or whatever. So it has a smaller pack and they went lighter. So you could do a light EV with a small pack or a heavy EV with a bigger pack like the Teslas are. And the thing that concerns me about that is safety. So mainly I just drive my Nissan Leaf around town. I'm not doing highway driving. I would suggest that you don't purchase this car for highway driving because I'm a little bit concerned about it being lighter. So if you get into a sticky situation with a, with a high um, speed, the car that's heavier is gonna win out in that safety rating. So that's my concern with this. Is it a good around town vehicle? Absolutely. And in about 180 miles uh, of range, you should be able to do some highway driving with it as well. It charges from the front. I think that they still incorporate the DC fast charger. I would warn you with that, I am skeptical about the DC fast charger, I'm worried that it'll burn your battery out. Some of these other vehicles, I've had personal friends that have used the DC fast charging, not on the Leaf, but other vehicles, and their battery went out. Now, what caused that? I'm not quite sure, but this is that's just anecdotal evidence, but it did happen, and it happened to some of my friends. As you can see, a lot of trunk space. It looks like they have an app, I guarantee you this app is not as good as Tesla's. Uh, the other thing, there is a backup camera on it. There's a backup camera on mine. The screen is quite small and hard to see. Hopefully they've made some adjustments to that. Uh, the UI is not bad. I like the UI on my 2013. There's some uh, hard keys on it that you could turn off the charging timer and start charging immediately. That's, that's a nice feature. So you don't have to go on your app or anything to start charging or reprogram um, the car in the UI. 
See, this this is what makes me think that there's still a DC fast charger because this is offset to the left. I think that this is a, a DC fast charger. Now, I am very skeptical about these because I'm not sure what the active cooling measures are on the Nissan Leaf, uh, but look into that. I'm not sure if they incorporate active cooling measures. Uh, the next vehicle, the Chevy Bolt, supposedly did. This car was the car that I told you about that my friend burned out the battery. He was using DC fast charging. He charged this car in about 15 minutes. Now, this car was discontinued Q4 of 2021. And my friend told me that it had active cooling measures in the car. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever built like a computer from scratch, but it's kind of like that concept. Whenever I built a computer from scratch, there was always hardware compatibility issues. Now, this is back at this is probably like 10 years ago, but EVs are still in kind of a startup phase. So what you're doing here is you're pairing a Chevy Bolt with a like EV Go charger. Do you think those two companies communicated to to each other to best uh, charge the vehicle? Probably not. The advantage that you have with Tesla is the fact that Tesla made the charger and the charger talks to the car. Does that happen with the Bolt? You know, I'm not sure. Maybe you could tell me down below. Is there a computer at the EV Go charger talking to the Chevy Bolt? I have no idea, but I'm skeptical if that actually happens. Um, so let's see what they've got here. They've got the cheapest model at 32. So it looks like it's a little more expensive. They're saying 260 miles. Very optimistic. Probably around 220. So you could take this on the freeway. I would be concerned about weight and safety. Um, I'm not sure how big the battery pack is. Did it say it back there? see here so there's a cheaper model 247 259 the cheaper model has more range oh this is more like an suv looking one so you get a bigger car with less range for the more expensive one not even that much more expensive so euv as opposed to an ev let's go with the uh cheaper one hd surround vision I don't know if I'd spring an extra couple thousand for that. Leather seats, I don't think I would pay for that. Okay, you could get better wheels, better colors. Charging cable. Tesla doesn't have that standard anymore. Um, you have to buy that, but it's not that expensive. This looks like a really good interior. I really like this interior. I hope the UI here is, is nice. But again, I guarantee you it's not as good as the Tesla UI. They don't really tell you how big the powder, the battery pack is. It looks like it is a hatchback. I believe it's a rear charge. Um, but I guarantee you that the space, even though it's a small car, the space in the interior will be nice. It'll be quite large. Yeah, so not sure. It looks like it's going to start at 31. Um, I'd be skeptical if you could take this on long trips, and I'd be skeptical about the, the battery longevity, and I'd be worried about uh, charging it on the road. So would I buy this for around town? Yes. Would I buy it as a viable car, like a normal 400 MPG, like 400 mile uh, gas car? No, I wouldn't but I'd probably have a gas car and pair that with this and do most of my around town, all of my around town driving in this. Um, now, the next car here is another Chevy. So this is the Volt with a V and it looks like it was discontinued and I brought this one up. So this one is a hybrid, but my neighbor just got this car and it's a plug-in hybrid and it can go about 55 miles around town. Let's see here, 2018 Chevy Volt from 23. So if you get it used, you might be able to get it cheaper than the brand new EV. You still have to do oil changes. 
And my neighbor told me that the maintenance schedule for the oil changes is one year. So that's a little better on the maintenance. You'd save $10,000 and you could essentially use it around town fairly easily and just use a little bit of gas. So it'll switch over after you expend all the electric battery to gas, and then it'll start just acting as a hybrid. So there's a lot of utility to that. And, um, yeah, I support my neighbor's purchase of this car. Obviously they got it used cause now it's, uh, they don't, they don't make new ones based on this article here. Um, but yeah, you still have to maintain the gas engine and it does have a smaller pack. It is a little bit heavier. So I bet you would be better on the safety rating. Uh, but if you, if you pick this up used, uh, for 20,000, 23, 24,000, you're going to be saving so much money. I would say it's worthwhile. I would say the first two cars are worthwhile purchasing as well. The bolt and the leaf, but for a specific purchase for a specific purpose. And that would just be around town. Uh, you could stretch the range, but I'm worried about the battery packs longevity. I would definitely take these two, all the EVs, Clean out your garage, put them in your garage. That way you don't have to worry about heat and wear on the battery as much. That's what I've done. And I've just had a, a bit of battery degradation that I can tell. Uh, my battery degradation on my Model 3 is about 20 miles. And the battery degradation on the Nissan Leaf is about the same, around 20 to 30 miles. I can't, can't really tell exactly, but I have garaged both of my cars and... Uh, yeah, that's that's the way to go for sure. I, I would speculate that I'd have more battery degradation if they are outside in the elements every day. OK, finally, you have a twenty thousand dollar more uh, expensive car here, the Model 3. However, this says you get three hundred and thirty four miles. That's actual. That's not like fictitious like these other numbers. And. So that being actual, you might say, well, that's not enough. I need 500 miles. Can you drive 500 miles straight? And I've heard this argument time and time again, and I cannot. Maybe you're different. Maybe you have a huge bladder. But typically what happens is I get tired of driving at around 200 miles. And, you know, that's like three or four hours. And then I have to stop and there are Tesla charging stations everywhere. So <clears throat> what you have on the Tesla is a viable long range vehicle. You also have charging stations everywhere that are communicating with each other. So the car in the charging station communicates with each other and ramps down the charging curve so that you don't blow out your battery. There's also active cooling measures on the Tesla batteries and you have high quality batteries in the battery pack. You have a lot of space, I would say a bit more space than the other two EVs that I had because you have a frunk. This engine uh, is coaxial with like the back axle. So that's why there's a frunk. There's no engine in, in the front. It's along the back axle here. So you have quite a bit of space. Um, top speed 145 miles. This thing is a burner. I mean, this thing at just the the single motor, you hit that button, you hit the, the accelerator, it goes. You can get around people. You can get out of situations. The active safety measures are incredible. So it's it's looking at all times as you're driving and it will start alerting you if, you if it thinks that you're gonna crash. It will stop you if it thinks you're gonna crash. It will move you over if someone moves into your lane. Both of those things have happened to me in this car, which has saved me thousands of dollars in repairs. Uh, one of my buddies almost drove through a garage. I have no idea why. I, we were just driving it, this around and uh, the Tesla stopped us very abruptly, but we did not run through the garage. Uh, someone was in my blind spot and all of a sudden this thing moves me over out of the lane. I looked behind me and this driver behind me was almost sideswiped me, but the car saved me. I can tell you another time uh, I was in L.A. driving the 405 and this I got sideswiped again. And this thing's like a whip. 
I literally just barely touched the steering wheel and boom, I'm out of the way of this car. So this car has saved me multiple times. I don't think that I could have had the same performance or safety with, I know I wouldn't have with the other three cars. And um, this is an excellent vehicle. This is probably the best vehicle ever created because of its mass producibility, its cost, its range, um, everything about it. I would definitely spring for the extra 20,000 here. You're gonna get uh, more of a return. You can go cheaper. This is 267 miles. You know, this is gonna be viable for every trip that you make, except for, you know, I wouldn't wanna go to like drive across country with 267 miles, but you could still do it very easily. Uh, it would just take more charging stops. Um, the extra, you know, what are we talking here? 70 miles? Yeah, that's well worth it. At 334 miles, I would challenge you to go to zero on this from, from topped off. So I would challenge you to go and uh, drive 334 miles straight. That's going to be a tough one. The interior, excellent. The UI on the kind of iPad here in the middle, excellent. The gas... Um, your, your miles per hour is up in the upper right-hand corner, so you have to move your eyes to the right instead of looking down in between the steering wheel. I actually like that better. You look to the right and you have a map at all times. The GPS is excellent. It's so easy to navigate. You put in where you wanna go and it'll plan your uh, charging stops for you. You're getting so much value with this car. Uh, I would definitely get it. The one complaint is, the top of the door sill is absent because the roof is very low for aerodynamics, I would assume. And you, ha you will have to duck your head. Now, if you could spring for it, I think it's like 10,000 more. Get a Model Y if you don't want to kind of get into this car. Once you're in the car, it's very spacious. But getting into it, you kind of have to duck your head. I've had a coworker in mine who's uh, like six foot nine, and he got into it. You just pushed the seat back. Once, once he was in it, he was fairly comfortable. But yeah, it was challenging to, to get him in here. So for him, I would suggest a Model Y for sure. Um, but yeah, a lot of interior space, a lot of trunk space as well. And it will be quite surprising to you, uh, this car, once you get into it. Um, it won't make sense to you at first. But once you get kind of like all the safety features... And, you know, all the features of the Model 3, uh, your, your socks are going to be blown off. Trust me. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely consider the cheaper cars if you don't have enough money. If you have to finance a purchase of a Model 3, your money will return to you. Because, um, let's face it, the Chevy Bolt had a lot of battery issues. That's why they did discontinued it. The Nissan Leaf has some battery degradation issues and some safety issues being a lighter car, while the Model 3 is has a bigger battery pack and a 5 out of 5 safety rating. Um, so I would just spring for the Model 3. The money will come back to you even if you're financing this car. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.